that's a uh, Frankie Queen. For <laughs> Hey, you know, we're too, we're too close to West Hollywood for those kind of uh, references. Just, yeah. Actually, yeah, can you move that guitar out of the way? Just move it over a little bit. Like that? Yeah. Yeah, 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 uh, a third of my time in Italy, and a third of my time in Spain. Wow. Yeah. Okay, okay so we're ready to go anytime you want. Um, okay, Frankie Benelli from Quiet Riot. I want to know what brings you here to celebrate Randy Rhodes today? Um, everybody knows uh, what a great guitarist Randy was, is. Um, and although I knew him briefly, the opportunity to pay homage and, uh, and honor his memory was uh, very important, something worth doing. Um, I knew Randy probably least of all the, some of the people that were here, such as, you know, Rudy Sarzo and Ozzy uh, and people like that. But in the short period of time that I knew him, I knew him to be not only a great guitar player, but a really wonderful human being. It was just, he was just a blessing. I hear that. So what, what, what's a memory that you have with him? Um, probably the f easiest one that comes to mind is when Ozzy was first putting the band together he had been flying between London, New York and LA looking for musicians and this had gone on for about uh, several months and um, Randy was already beginning to uh, work with him writing songs and they were looking for other musicians to put a band together uh, originally they were going to put the band together out of Los Angeles and uh, Randy told Ozzy about this this kid at the time uh, who had this big huge drum set not a lot of drums it was just big huge drums <laughs> and uh, had a huge sound and uh, he thought that I played like an English drummer and Ozzy would like that so Ozzy had him uh, give me a call and Randy called me up about it and and you know first I'm going Ozzy Osbourne is the Black Sabbath guy and he goes yeah yeah he's a really nice guy and I said okay I mean I, yeah I'll come down and play but I didn't even have a car at the time as a drummer no car so he borrowed a car that was big enough to pick up my big drum set and he came over to my apartment and uh, we got together at a rehearsal studio in Hollywood called Mars Rehearsal and uh, during uh, those rehearsals is where we started working on songs that uh, later on ended up becoming uh, um, Over the Mountain and uh, Crazy Train and several others. Uh, and, and it was great and Ozzy, you know, Ozzy was, was really fun to be around. He was very quiet, you know, and uh, we walked together with Randy down to the corner liquor store to get sodas. And Randy was just the most enthusiastic person I'd ever seen. I mean, he was born with a guitar in his hands. He always had it in his hands. He was constantly playing. He could be having a conversation with you and he was doing a guitar lesson by himself. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I've always been grateful for him to have thought of me enough to uh, include in that situation. Um, at one point, Quiet Ride were thinking, the original version of Quiet Ride were thinking of um, replacing their drummer and uh, they wanted me to come down and play and I was in a three-piece band playing around the Hollywood circuit, the same as them, and we were a heavier band and I enjoyed Quiet Ride but I thought they were a pop band and so I went down to quote-unquote audition and did my very best to be as late as I could possibly be and play as bad as I could possibly play and they agreed. Wow. Yeah. So and you could have been met. a little bit instrumental in how those uh, initial songs came out just with a little bit of input here, a little bit of input there? It's possible. I mean the only thing I can, you know, because it's not my place to say, the only thing I can say is I remember that in 1987 there was a CBS function, a press function going on and uh, at the time Ozzy was on Jet Records which was a custom label for, uh, for Epic which is also you know at the time CBS and, uh, and I was there because of Quiet Riot and I remember Ozzy saying to the press people that uh, I was the one who came up with the drum intro uh, for this one particular song Lee Kerslake recorded it and Tommy Aldridge got all the credit Wow! So, you tell me Unfortunately. Well, now we know yeah. the truth. <laughs>
you know, it's hard to say. Well, let me ask you one last question. Being as innovative and um, genius as Randy was at guitar work, do you think anyone who's come along that has uh, been as close to that? Look, you just got to go right there. I don't think so. I mean, I think I think you have you have. Hendrix and you have Eddie Van Halen and then you have Randy um, and talent like that is as far as I'm concerned is above measure there are a lot of great guitar players around that have that have come and gone and there will be more but every once in a great while there's there's you know there's these people that are just so talented and so different and so unique uh, and I think in rock you can count them probably on one hand you know like I said Hendrix Van Halen Randy Jeff Beck and and then there's other great players but you know this caliber very rare it's like a perfect diamond you know, it only comes every once in a great while, and you should treasure it. So, this Rock Walk induction was very well deserved in your opinion? Not only was it well deserved, it's been a long time coming. Um, you know, Randy was on the scene for such a short period of time that it's difficult for people to really understand and, and measure the talent because it was cut so short. I mean, who knows what he what he would have done? Because he certainly was capable of so much more than he did, and what he did do was head and shoulders above the rest. So, yeah, well deserved, time honored. Thank you very much for giving us a few minutes. Hey, Frankie, for you any time. <laughs>